Welcome to No Border Blues with Johnny Bergen and Stephanie Tice, a podcast about international blues artists you should know about and the sometimes surprising hidden blues scenes around the world. Johnny is a Delmark recording artist who regularly tours and collaborates with international blues players. And Stephanie recently produced the No Border Blues Japan CD, the first American compilation of the underground Japanese blues scene. This show is sponsored by Chicago Blues Network, bringing Chicago blues to the world. And today we are in Bogota, Colombia, with Leonardo Parra Castillo and Luis Alejandro Silva. And they're going to play the blues for you. Welcome. Let's hear some blues. Thank you. Hi, guys. So nice to be here with you. I believe that 
that you love me. Wow. Thank you for that. Bravo. Bravo. That was, that was a Shaky Jake song with, with Magic Sam, right? Yeah. He, I think he did it with Magic Sam. <clears throat> he did another one with Freddie King. But the first time I heard it was, was at the American Folk with T-Bone Walker. And that's the version we've been following. Yeah, it did have a T-Bone feel in there. Yeah, you guys sound great. Thank, Thank you, you, Johnny. Thanks Thank a you. lot. We really appreciate that. You both grew up in Bogota, right? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, Luis, you're, you're studying in the United States now, right? Yeah, I was studying. I mean, I was studying in, in, in a university, in a college that it's uh, in Flushing. It's called Queens College. I was studying there and, you know, the pandemic began. So I had to, I had to return here. Yeah. I had to return and... Uh, well, you know, my whole life kind of changed. Yeah. Since then. Well, it sounds like you're, I mean, I, I like, I love the way you play. And um, Leo, sound, your singing is great. So you started your career in Argentina. Kind of, yeah. Well, yeah, Argentina was kind of my blue school in, in a sense. I went to, there's a blue school there actually. And I, and I went there for one year. Oh, you did? Yeah, it's called Escuela de Blues. You may find them. Um, Is it the same? The same that's in Madrid with Ho Jose Luis well, Pardo? It's it's uh, the one in Madrid was founded by a, by, a, by an Argentinian, and yeah, they are connected. It, Jose it's, Luis Pardo, right? Yeah, Luis Pardo found Jose Luis Pardo. Yeah, he founded that one in in Madrid, but the one from Buenos Aires was founded by Gabriel Gretzer. They are friends anyway, you know, they are the same people. And now both of you teach, right? Yes, I'm a teacher. I'm a guitar and singing teacher also, yes. In, and, and Luis, do you teach too in, in Bogota? Yeah, I mean, in this moment, no, but I've been teaching, you know, like for more than 20 years guitar. I used to teach even at school. My friends asked me, oh, please, can you give me some lessons? So during the breaks, I, I, would, I wouldn't take a break. I would, you know, go to a place with a friend and, and just hang and play some, some music, yeah. Wow. I would like to ask, to ask you guys, what inspired you to start playing the blues? Um, and do you have a following for the blues there in your country? So tell me a little bit when you first got started and who influenced you? Well, you know what's... You know, the blues was this kind of mystery thing that I couldn't really understand at the beginning. You know, I was in this rock and roll band like 15 years ago and the singer, he was a lot into the blues, but the band wasn't a blues band. It was like a rock and roll, progressive, psychedelic, soulful, bluesy band. You know, he had lots of different things. Why can't he? Like he was older. He was older than all of us. And so I was interested in the blues, but it was kind of, I don't know, like, a mystery to me I was more into rock and roll so I like I started listening to it by that time but I wasn't that much into it it took me some years to really start to to feel haunted by this music you know uh, uh, but that experience had a lot to do because this guy he would make us play some blues covers like Jimmy Rogers and uh, maybe some uh, Muddy Waters some um uh, you know, songs like Mean Old Frisco, <coughs> That's All Right, blues classics, uh, maybe some more modern stuff like Stevie Ray Vaughan and, and that stuff. And it was cool, but you know, when I li now I notice that when I listen to the records, I couldn't listen to all the notes, you know, because it was, it was like hidden for me, like a mystery. Like I, I was listening to other music. So it took me some years to start understanding this thing. But it was... It was actually in 2013 when, when, you know, I was going through some hard times in my life and things weren't working the way I wanted to. And I was trying to do something else with music. You know, I, I studied classical guitar uh, at 
at university, but that wasn't my thing. I even graduated. <laughs> and um, it was by that time that I didn't know what to do. And I started listening to the blues and it had a different meaning to it. It wasn't just good played music. It wasn't just a nice sound. It was something that touched me like hard and I would cry when I listened to it. Oh, wow. So, That's so I, real inspiration. <laughs> well, <laughs> the truth. It, I feel like a little embarrassed to talk about it, but anyway. No, no, that's great. <laughs> but uh, it was then when I, like, I felt like a calling and I noticed I wasn't doing what I wanted. So I said, well, I like this music. It's been there for a while, like, like around me. It must be for something. I, I want to learn how to play it. I want to learn how to sing it. So I started, I, I started focusing on that and listening to records, you know. I didn't know where to start, but I started with what I had. And then after some months, uh, I noticed uh, that there was a blue school in Argentina. And, you know, Buenos Aires is a very important city for rock and roll and blues in Latin America. So I said, well, what the heck? Why, why don't I go down to, to Buenos Aires and see what's there for me? Maybe I have something to learn because Colombia, well, there's rock here and rock in Peru and in Ecuador, but we are not really like rock and roll countries, you know, but Argentina has national rock and roll from the 70s and bluesy sound and some blues music. So I said, maybe that's a place for me to go and to grow. So I went there in 2014 and I lived there for five years. I met lots of colleagues, lots of friends, lots of fellow musicians. There's such a high level of blues playing down there, you know, like a instrumental blues really good musicians so i learned a lot by hanging out with them and going and also out to jimmy, jimmy burns there's a there's some musicians that travel there so you you met some uh american blues musicians as well in argentina didn't you i i met lori bell in 2014 well just talked with him for five minutes and he gave a, like a talk in the in the school wow but it was really inspiring uh, just talking with him for five minutes like it was like um, and also I met Jimmy Burns and uh, uh, Chris Kane. Chris uh, Kane. <laughs> Kirk That's Fletcher. Uh, but I didn't get the chance to talk that much with them, but I could see them play. And, well, it was beautiful. That was beautiful. That's wonderful. Yeah, Chris Kane is the first blues artist I saw live that inspired me years ago. And it was like, he was the beginning of my blues journey. Chris oh. Kane in the Bay Area. Okay. It, it touched me a little bit. You said that you really related, it was a hard time in your life. And that's when you related to blues a lot because you know the cultural history of blues and the words that you're singing come from you know, a very hard time in our American history. So I'm always interested in if, if that inspires you as well, sort of the hardship behind the songs. Of course, you know, because when you, when you see the lives, this these guys lived. And when you see where they came from, well, well, maybe you see that the stuff you're going through is not that hard, you know? Like they really went through Hopefully. hard stuff. They came from, from hard lives. But at the same time, uh, you see you can, you can relate your pain to that when you sing, when you play, you know, there's something deeper to it than just playing it right. And that's what, caught me about this music, you know? That's a really great statement because it really isn't about playing it right. It's about, you know, playing it from where it came, where it comes from as much as you can and grappling with that. I mean, you can play it right, but it doesn't mean anything. You have to feel it. Yeah, you have to feel yeah, it. I completely agree, Johnny. That, those are wise words, completely wise words. You guys said of so, so when you lived in Argentina, were you, were you supporting yourself uh, as a musician or did, did you play a lot? Um, like, as, as, did you play as a solo artist back then or were you, were you just singing in a band? Or? Yeah, I was, I began as a solo artist. You know, I, I was hunted by the, by the image of this lonely bluesman, you know, Son House, Robert Johnson, first Muddy Waters, and I wanted to travel. So, and I liked that thing, you know, Robert Johnson traveling from one place to another, you know, so I, I played by myself uh, most of the time. 
and I wanted to learn that that style, slide, solo, the foot, you know. And the John Lee Hooker style. I really like the way you play the John Lee Hooker. Thanks, bro. I Thanks. think that that's what I saw. I saw a John Lee Hooker video. Oh, I mean, I saw you playing some John Lee Hooker, and I'm like, we got to get this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I actually love John Lee Hooker. Yeah. And, you know, it's so simple, but it's also hard, you know, and you really, you know, you've, you've got to sort of go to a special place. It's like you said you were haunted by the music. That's a, that's a telling word. And not everybody would say that, you know, that's a special thing. So don't, don't, don't ever give that up, you know? <laughs> Thanks, bro. Sometimes it's good to someone to tell you that don't give it up because, you know, life is hard. <laughs> It's true. And, and that, that brings me to something else. Like, I mean, and really both of you to, for both of you, what's it like sort of getting by as, as a blues musician in Bogota? Do you want to answer this one? Can you repeat the question, please? Okay. I mean, I, I, I'm assuming that both of you are, are kind of working as a musician or in, in Bogota or at yes. least were before the COVID. So, you know, yeah. what's that like? Like, what kind of shows do you play? How do you promote your shows? Who are your fans? Like, that kind of thing. Well, I don't, I don't know if I will exactly answer your question, but what I feel is that the people here, I, I mean, like, blues, it is something that, in my opinion, is like something to feel. You know, it's not something to maybe understand or to know. It's something to feel. So people here, I have noticed that people really like blues. They are, it's kind of weird. It's like magic, you know. People really like blues. Here, I, I was a little bit, you know, surprised to realize that this because it's like a very, a music that really touches people, you know, maybe... Other music, like maybe classical music, it touches a lot of people, but at the same time, like a lot of people cannot understand that music. But with blues, there's something. There's something, yeah. There's something that, that connects with people. So so I think that it's really beautiful. And like the last concert we had together, I was really surprised by that because there were there was something like in connection with the audience, that was really, really beautiful. Like, There's something great. strange with the blues here, you know, because we we're talking with a friend the other day and here, like, maybe they, the people don't know about the music, they don't know about Muddy Waters or John Lee Hooker or that stuff, but when they listen to it uh, and it's well played, they <laughs> like it. But people from many different backgrounds, you know, I mean, my mom likes it. I know metalheads that like it. I know people that come from hip hop and folklore that like it. Mm -hmm. uh, like the young boy likes it and the old person likes it. The rich and the poor like it. For example, I, I mean here. And that's strange, but I believe it has to do because it's popular music. It's music from the people and it's very honest music. So it, and it talks about life. It talks about pain. Maybe people don't understand what the lyrics are saying because not everybody knows English. Mm -hmm. but they understand the feeling and it's music. I believe music where you expose yourself because you let yourself be vulnerable. You mean you are crying, you're moaning, you're weeping. You're talking about sex. You're talking about being robbed or whatever. And that's, that's opening to the people and not many styles of music do that. Like showing yourself as a vulnerable fail, failable. I don't know if that's word exists human being, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and exactly. I believe that's what make people connect with the music here with with blues it's always about the feeling it's like the most important thing when you study music and and you play all kinds of music sometimes you tend like to lose that feeling you know because maybe you're studying it too much with blues no it mm -hmm. seems so simple but it is extremely difficult to play good it's extremely difficult music in my opinion oh. It's a lifelong project for sure. This is No Border Blues with Johnny Bergen and Stephanie Tice. I'd like to just ask you a little bit about songwriting. 
and lyrics. One of the things that I ran across in Japan is they sang in English, but I asked them to write a song in Japanese. So I have one Japanese song on the album, which was very interesting to do. So I was wondering when you're composing or if you do your own work, do you only think in English or have you written a Spanish um, blues song? I haven't yet. I haven't yet in Spanish. I have written songs in Spanish, but they're not blues. Right. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, well, I have friends that write. There's this thing here, you know, I don't know if the same happened. Maybe it happened in the States and in England, you know, in the 60s and 70s with blues rock. The thing is, in Argentina and here in Bogota, people relate a lot blues with rock, you know. And many of us, when we started with the blues, we didn't know about Muddy Waters or Howling Wolf or all those guys. We knew about Led Zeppelin. We knew about Eric Clapton and Cream. So, um they say in some ways the first street school of the blues in Argentina or here comes actually from rock and roll. So there's people that have been doing this rock blues, like kind of Doors, Cream, Zeppelin, that stuff, uh, since 20 years or more. But only a few years ago, there has been people doing actually traditional blues, like getting into the old, into the old black musicians. Uh, but many of these guys that come from rock and roll, they have written lots of, music in Spanish. And it's really special because, well, I came back from Argentina two years and a half ago. And we had a little productora, how do you say that in English? Uh, you know, we produced shows with a friend, you know? But, mm -hmm. I, uh, 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 you know, Johnny was, was talking about Adrian Flores. And Adrian Flores is a great producer and he knows all the black cats, but he's an extreme purist. So he, in some sense, he created this division between the guys that come from national Argentinian blues in Spanish and the real, and what, he, what we call the real blues. But I learned from that experience. I know Adrian, actually his son lives here in Cali and he plays blues, you know, but I wanted more to create bridges more than walls. So what we did is we started to produce shows that had an important traditional blues content in the center, but also local blues rock musicians and we may play with them so sometimes we would pick up a rock a rock blues song from bogota that was written 15 years ago <coughs> in spanish but we accompanied the guy with more of a molly waters robert johnson feel in those shows right. and that was a cool experience we did that for two years it was called blues in el parkway and we had concerts all around the city we did a little festival in a theater here with, with money from the, from the Alcaldia, you know? Yeah, from, from, the, from the city. From the from city, the city. Yeah. 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 And um, and that was important because now there's a blues jam here. I'm not organizing it now, but we started it and it's called traditional blues jam and it's every two weeks on Thursday. So since two years for, um, um, until now, there has been a work to create more conscience about traditional blues amongst other musicians, not only blues musicians, because most of the people that came from other genres used to look down on blues, you know? So we were trying to change that. And I know I haven't written blues songs in Spanish, but I have learned many of them <laughs> from my colleagues around the city. And well, it's been a cool experience because I've learned from them and they have also learned from the traditional blues masters and they have gotten more into listening to the original blues. Great. So you well, kind of started a scene in your town with this blues jam and with this uh, event that you were producing. We started with, well, we had a team, you know, it was a, it was a group of people and uh, we came from different backgrounds, but I was like the more purest of them all. You know, they kind of, sometimes they would make fun of me <laughs> but uh, I don't consider myself a purist. It's just, uh, I love the music. I, I want bridges, not walls. So, you know? so did this, this jam that, that, that you all started, did this sort of create some new blues players in, in your town and some new blues fans? Sometimes just, it just takes just a few people to sort of get involved and it, it kind of starts a ball rolling and people jump in and then all of a sudden you have more musicians and you have like three bands instead of just one guy 
you know, <laughs> is, is that well, kind of what happened, do you think? Yeah, yeah, that happened because one of the problems we had here in Bogota, especially, is that many of the bands and the musicians in the blues and rock scene, they were dispersed. They weren't, they weren't hanging out. There was no scene in the sense of a bar or a place where you get together with the people. You know, we were losing that. And in Buenos Aires, there is a lot of that. You know, it's nightlife, it's lots of musicians, and you get to know a lot of people. So you grow a lot just by going out and hanging out. So I came inspired by that experience. And, um, and yeah, there's a lot of kids now that want to learn. There's a lot of the old cats that have been playing for a while, but now they're more interested on learning some little tricks from the old cats rather than only from the rock and roll players. And the best thing is we've gotten together. You know, there's a, there's a place and a space where people get together and say, hey, I know this guy, I know this guy, I like the way he plays. Uh, we share music. Uh, so yeah, there's something going on. It's been really slow and well, we just have to be patient, but I think this, the seeds are growing slowly. And there are young guys, I met this kid, like this 20 year old kid, and he's really interested in learning with his band. Like, hey, guys, he plays well. He plays other kinds of music. But he's like, I want to learn the blues. And they're really humble. They're open to receiving, like, music and playlists and stuff. So I think there's something happening. But I, I believe we'll see the fruits in 10 years or something like that, <laughs> like the real ones. And, and what about other cities? Do you, do you sometimes, like, I mean, before this pandemic, I mean, were you playing in other cities in Colombia and is that difficult to do or do you have like a kind of a network of people where you can help each other in different cities? Yeah, there are, there are, there are good, you know, we're just few blues musicians in this country, but there are, but we have some in different series. There's, there's this guy, well, Junior Flores, uh, Adrian Flores' son, yes. he lives in Cali and he's had, he has a band there. It's called uh, The Rooster, The Rooster. Cali Blues Brothers and the Rooster, CBB and the Rooster. They're really yeah. good. They're fun. There's some other guys that do stuff in Spanish, and it's funny because they do funny songs, but based on traditional blues songs. So they may do Caledonia, but with local themes and humor in Spanish, you know? Right. They are called the Reyes of Chingy Chingy, Chingy Chingy, <laughs> King, Chingy, Chingy Kings, and all in relation to Adrian Flores that he calls Chingy Chingy everything that he thinks is not blues. So that's really right. funny. So it's like, okay, that's who we are. Yeah. <laughs> I can recommend you uh, some other musicians. There's this guy from Argentina in Cali. He's called Pancho Campo. And he plays like Blind Blake, Blind Blind Lemon, uh, Blind, um, Blind Boy Fueler, that stuff, you know? Uh, you know what? I could practice for 20 years and I could never play it. <laughs> yeah, me neither. That's why I don't go, <laughs> that's why I don't go there. <laughs> Leave it to the professionals. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know. I know. Yeah, wow, but he's really, really cool. cool. He knows a lot. He knows a lot. Pancho Campo from he's from Argentina, but he lives in Cali. And there's this other guy that he actually used to be the singer of my rock band 15 years ago. He lives in Medellin, Camilo Restrepo, and he plays Mississippi John Hurt. He plays uh, Charlie Patton, you know, and even the diff most difficult Robert Johnson stuff. Great voice. I think he used to live in Chicago. Oh. And there's a blues festival in Medellin. There's a blues, a little blues festival in Cali. So yeah, well, it's few people, but we are starting to get together since some years. That's really exciting. And we hope to visit some of those blues festivals someday, get down there. Be awesome. But maybe you can think about writing a song in Spanish in blues for me. Yeah. Let me know. Know. If you do, if you do. I, re I remember we were working with Kike Gomez in, in Spain. He's a harmonica player and yeah. Johnny was recording with him. And I asked him um, to write a song in Spanish. And he well, had never well, first thought about I it. asked him to do it and he said no. And then she did and he, he did it. He was like, oh, okay, for you, I will do it. <laughs> um, but he hadn't thought about doing it in Spanish, but it's beautiful when you express in your own language, there's just some tonation, you know, about it. And it's 
Um, I had a musician in Sweden who sent me two songs, one in Swedish and one in English. It, they were the same song. And I was a DJ and I played it for my audience in, Sp in uh, Swedish and in English. And everybody liked the Swedish one better because they could tell <laughs> it's, the expression and the tonality of it was expressing better in his own language. So I bet if you wrote a song about love or heartbreak or anything, it would come back out a little bit differently if it was uh, in your own language. So think about that. I will, yeah. I will. <laughs> and, and I have to say, I, I love the way you did that, that J.B. Lenore song, uh, Born Dead. I mean, that's, yeah. it's such a highly personal song and, and it's so emotional just to even try to play it is great. And, and um, you sang it great. Thank you, guys. Thank you, really. I really appreciate it. Well, I'll tell you what. Do you guys want to do another song? Yeah, definitely. Alabama. Let's go to J.B. Lenoir. We're going to sing some other J.B. Lenoir. Yeah. Alabama blues. You know, that music is more relevant now than ever because, I mean, it was written during a big civil rights struggle in the United States when, when um, Black people were finally getting, you know, some legal rights that they did not have. And and they were ending these Jim Crow laws. And now it's like, we're right back where we started. And this music is a, it really hits home. The second struggle. You know, the hard thing about doing things in Spanish, the blue, I think it's easier to do a, a blues song in Swedish than in Spanish. <laughs> because you're the only roots. person who ever said that. <laughs> because of the roots. Yeah, because Spanish is so different from English, you know, pretty rich. Well, there's a lot of things with the musicality of the words. And English is rich in lots of meaningful one-syllable words. You know, there's a lot of words that mean a lot with one syllable. In Spanish, it's different. And yeah. so when, when I've tried to do stuff, the, the, the main difficulty comes from uh, the melody being in line with the, with the lyrics because we use more words, the words are longer. Yeah, so how do you, yeah. Are different. yeah. So it, it, I'm, I'm not saying it's impossible because I know people that do it well, but that's what makes it more difficult. Yes, but I remember Kike telling me that it was easier to rhyme things because there's only the <laughs> O and A. <laughs> yeah, so, there's so many more so, words that rhyme. There is Spanish. It, it makes it easier to rhyme in in Spanish. The thing is that sometimes when I've heard like blues in Spanish, is like what I've heard is not like what you would expect. It's very different. So you're kind of surprised. Yeah. Well, it's a new thing. You know, you, yeah. you learned blues in the English context and also the cultural context because you study the musicians that you're interested in but the idea of blues is applicable anywhere and i think that it's just fun to think about it if you have something in your heart that you're thinking about it in your language could you express it within the within that foundation when we went to japan could they even write a song in japanese and it turned out some of the djs like it the best you know, it's Marasuki Nanda, and it's just a fun song. Okay. I'll keep thinking on it. I feel like I have a homework. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. Okay, let's let's hear a song, you guys. Let's do it. Alabama, 
all I'm promising to never have love for me. Alabama seem to never have love for me. Oh God, I wish you would rise up one day. Leave my people to let of be. My brother was taken up for my mother. And a police officer shot him down. My brother was taken out for my mother. And a police officer, he shot him down. I can help but to sit down and cry sometimes. Think about how my poor brother lost his life. Alabama, Alabama, why you wanna be so mean? Alabama, Alabama. You got my people behind a barbed wire fence. Now you're trying to take my freedom away from me. Bravo. 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 I have never had the pleasure to to hear live blues. No, no, no yet. Well, you'll have to come visit us. Yeah. Oh, um, you have to come visit us. Yeah, I would love to. I would definitely <laughs> love right. to. Yeah. I went to I went to New Orleans, but like 18 years ago. Wow. And nice. we were we were, we were to the south. Uh, I wish I would have known more about the blues because I, we were in Alabama, Mississippi, you know, Louisiana. But New Orleans was awesome. That was before Katrina. I don't know, I, don't, I haven't been there after Katrina, but it was such a moving experience. Can both of you tell us like how to get in touch with you, how to follow you on, on social media, how to hear some more of your music, that kind of thing? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. You can follow me on Instagram, Leo Parra, or Leo Parra Castillo. Also on Facebook, um, my YouTube channel, well, it's kind of rusty, but I have some stuff. I've been uploading some stuff. Well, since I stopped playing, I haven't uploaded anything, but we are planning on recording some of these songs soon. Yeah. And upload you, them there. You also so have something on that. Spotify, don't you? Don't you have a song on Spotify as I well? I have a couple, of al- uh, a couple of albums in Spotify. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I liked your version of Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> it's funny. That's so, you know, the stripped down, like the really kind of quiet drums and the acoustic guitar. That's a good sound. I have to credit the producer of the record, Julio Fabiani, because Fabiani. I love that song and I used to sing it, but I didn't want to record it because I, I didn't feel I was ready. But he had this idea in mind. Uh, he had so, a vibe in mind, a vibe. Yeah. yeah, he knew he knew what he wanted. So we recorded it and well it's funny because that that's one of the songs the people like the most. Like everyone is like, hey, ain't no love in the heart of a city. And I was like, no, I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, it's it's cool to surprise people. It's like, you know, I do this and here's this too, which you might not have expected. So, you know, but I love the whole record and uh there was another one that really knocked me out. Special rider, special rider. Yeah. That was, and it has such a journey. You know, it starts out so quiet, and then the percussion really builds and stuff. This might sound crazy, but it's almost like an early Fleetwood Mac kind of thing. 
you know, like like with, when they had the cymbals and the percussion, it was like something. It was like albatross meets a pre-war blues sound, you know. <laughs> I really liked it. <laughs> it was really creative. Both of you um, sounded great, and thank you. You know, I'll encourage our listeners to follow Leo on Spotify. Yeah, and, thank you, and also if you want to, you yeah. have my my Instagram. Okay, so it's Luis underscore dot underscore Alejandro. Alejandro, yeah, that's it. Okay, we'll, we'll also put that in. Yeah, definitely, our- we will put that in our in our uh, description for this thing because okay. uh, both of you, you know, it'd be great. If, you know, I think we should support these uh, great players in Colombia. Yes. So congratulations to the both of you. Just really enjoy your your style and. Um, Thank you for sharing all those personal stories. And I know you're going to be working on that Spanish blues song. For yeah. so that's awesome. Is, is there anything else you guys would like to say to uh, the blues fans in the States? And just, just keep on listening to the blues. Just do new things, but always go back to the old cats, to the roots. Back to your foundation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. we need the roots. Uh, better knowing, Having the roots means better fruits, like Willie Dixon said. So. Let's do new stuff, but let's, don't forget the roots. That's what I would say. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it's a real pleasure to have you. And we'll see you guys Thank next time. Much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, so Johnny. Much. Thank you, Stephanie. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye-bye. We'll meet you guys. Bye. See you Take soon. Care. Bye. This has been No Border Blues with Johnny Bergen and Stephanie Tice.